Welcome again to our talks on machine translation. Before we delve deeper into the core of MT systems, we should spend some time on data preprocessing and normalization. It has been shown many times that a careful cleanup of the data pays itself off. Moreover, it's only you who can do this task. Nobody can help you with this because it's only you who knows or should know all the peculiarities of your input and training data. The overarching rule is very simple. Drop any distinctions that are not important for the output. So let's play the spot the five differences game as a warm up. This is the word chai written in two files and opened in Kate and also Firefox. You don't see any differences, do you? When working with empty, you don't really want a WYSIWYG editor. You rather want a what you see is indeed there editor. Vim or VI is one of those. So let's open the file in the, in the editor VI. You see right away that there are some special characters in the second file, 200B and 200E. Let's use one of the web pages that can help you with Unicode. Decode Unicode. 200B. 200B is zero with space. Space that is simply not to be visible. And 200E is left to right mark, a technical character that helps with bidirectional text. For example, if you mix Latin and Arabic scripts in one document. So these are two differences, but I promised you five. Where are they? There is a shortcut, GA, in the editor VI that will tell you what is the underlying sequence of bytes of the character under your cursor. So if we compare the underlying character codes in the first and second file representing the letter A in the word chai, we will notice that in the first file the A is a Latin A, while in the second file the A is actually a Cyrillic A with completely different Unicode symbols. The fourth difference is very similar and it concerns the final consonant Y. In the first file, the Y is just a single Unicode symbol, while in the second file, the symbol is composed from the E, from the Cyrillic I, and from the brev, the final accent over it. The last difference is visible only in Hexdump. The first file starts immediately with the letter CH, D187. In the second file, there is this D187, but there are also three bytes before that, EF, BB, and BF. If you then look up on Wikipedia, what is that, you will understand that this is the byte order mark that helps the computer to understand in which order are bytes in the file encoded. This is the Wokua triangle you know from our first talk and we can extend it at the very beginning. We will then see levels like encoding issues, script issues, and the level of tokens, tokenization. The first two levels were covered by the warm-up exercise. With encoding, we talked about Unicode and UTF-8, byte order mark, directional limit marks, and similar issues. With the script and characters, we have talked about the homoglyphs, the two A's, that look identical but have different codes. We've uh, also talked about Unicode normalization and the combining characters, the diacritics. Let's now have a look at tokenization. Tokenization is the process of stripping off typographical conventions from the text. It is actually just a matter of habit whether we write or don't write spaces between words and spaces between the words and punctuation symbols such as the full stop or question mark at the end. The word tokenization has very little in common with the following question mark. So it's better to split them up so that the empty system learns them as two separate units. Treating them as a single unit would require the system to see the tokenization also followed by a full stop or standalone uh, in a sentence, followed by a comma and all the other possible variations. When tokenizing, a reasonable approximation is to split at the change of Unicode character class shortly said, between letters and non-letters, between letters and punctuation symbols. But certainly there are counterexamples. Take the word don't. We don't write any space in it, so it could be one token. Or it could be tokenized at the change of Unicode character classes, making it three tokens. D-O-N, apostrophe, and T. And linguistically, the most adequate split would be do 
or do, and then n apostrophe t. People have worked on tokenization for a couple of decades now, and still no standard solution has been found or agreed upon. The reason is that the various subsequent processing steps may need different tokenization. As an example, take the sentence, the red-haired girl loves something. For some approaches to machine translation, such as the phrase-based one, it is actually better to split as much as possible, treating the words red and haired and also the hyphen as separate symbols. The system can then learn all the various colors and all the various properties separately. But for other types of processing, such as the syntactic analysis, it is actually better to treat these units as holes because they both serve as adjectives in the sentence. And a simple heuristic based on the suffix ed can easily recognize that. So that was tokenization. Further common normalization steps include normalization of quotation marks or expressions like I'll, wanna, and other contractions. It is also very wise to remove any characters that would negatively interact with the rest of the processing pipeline, such as the pipe or the start sentence symbol, or other markups such as XML. What people also often do is lower casing. So all the differences between small and large characters are neglected. There are obviously examples where this is hard. For example, Rice University is not the University of Rice. So here are our data processing tips. You should use a reliable text editor, such as VI, and you need to complement it with hex dump and decode Unicode every now and then. You should also check consistency of your data by specifically searching for things that can be done differently, such as the tokenization of don't. All these dry runs should be run with big data, as big as you can get hold of, because then you can spot also less frequent errors. And finally, when doing so, you should always collect all the errors and correct the most frequent ones first, which is very different from debugging of a computer program. Data normalization is a never-ending story, and some phenomena will be particularly difficult, such as the various spellings of the Hindi word standards. So when fighting with Hindi standards, bear with us. Or the US? So that's it. As I've warned you, some of our talks may be fairly technical, and this was one of those. I haven't warned you, though, that some of our talks will be even equipped with exercises. This is the first one. Go to our website, as the details below show, and register for a code examiner. And as your first homework, you can implement your own lowercaser and Unicode Deac Center. Next time, we will talk about empty evaluation.